His followers, Satanism, satanic abuse. These people believe that Satanists were engaged in illegal and criminal activity, culminating in murder, torture, and random acts of violence. It's uh, an appreciation for things that are romantic and passionate and sometimes uh, dark or melancholy. Okay, well, and Voltaire, we see a rather dark and melancholy shot of uh, the defendant, Scott Dileski. The misconceptions surrounding Satanism are plenty, such as the myth of satanic cults with animal or human sacrifice. Is there a difference between devil worshippers and Satanists? The Church of Satan was founded by Anton Sandor LaVey in 1966. And the Satanic Bible was written in 1969, codifying their belief system. Today, you will hear from Eric Werner, also known as Horvis Nocturnum. He's a committed warlock in the Church of Satan. He's also the author of Embracing the Darkness, Understanding Dark Subcultures, and most recently, Allure of the Vampire. Eric, in this episode of The Lexi Show, will help separate fact from fiction to bring clarity to our little knowledge of this dark, yet growing population. Church of Satan. The Lexi Show starts now. Understood it, they couldn't read it because I wasn't happy about life. I prayed that love God and would love me the way God loved me. They're a free spirit. I'm blessed. I am blessed. I hurt a lot of people. Satanism is technically known as anti-Christianity, but it's not. It's anti any dogmatic thinking and religion and philosophy. It is more based off of the theories of Nietzsche, of anti-herd conformity, uh, Anne Rand, the female political philosopher in the 60s and 70s who wrote a lot about uh, the philosophy of objectivism and that's all about personal ego and wealth and capitalism everything that a meritocracy stands for mm -hmm. um, you have the archetype from Carl Jung Carl Jung was uh, the student of Sigmund Freud okay. the father of modern-day psychology mm -hmm. and he theorized that all major figures and symbols uh, in this case the devil mm -hmm is nothing more than a psychological personification of what people all over the world put into something. They create the reality of it. Um, through myth, through legend, through fiction over the centuries, people have an idea of what the devil is. If you take out the reality to a Satanist that God, the devil, and hell don't exist, that it's nothing more to us than Greek and Roman mythology. It's something interesting to read and you can take something away from it, but it's a story to us. If you take the world view of what the devil is, it's a symbol of rebellion, of intellect, of pursuit of wealth and man's carnal nature, uh, sex and good food and wine and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to look at it from the world view where Anton LaVey was coming from. What you're saying is that you don't believe in any deity. No, other, other than the higher inner self that we all as human beings can hopefully strive to become. Our own godhood, in a way. Okay. So do you believe that, that you're a god? No. Uh, we're not delusional. Okay. Uh, we're the anti-delusional religion. It's kind of funny. Uh, the current high priest of the Church of Satan, uh, Peter Gilmore, uh, is very prone to go on television and in the media and say, we are a religion of non-joiners. And it sounds like an oxymoron, mm -hmm. but it's more people that resonate that same vibe, the same idea, and they join together mm -hmm. because we agree with those ideals that Anton Bay came up with. So, so okay, let's back it up a little bit. Okay. So your name is Eric Werner. Right. But you also go by a pen name yes. of Corvus Nocturnum? Nocturnum, yes. Okay, so you're an author. Embracing the Darkness, Understanding Dark Subcultures was my first book. Uh, 
about six, seven years ago, and it was my beginning into this type of lifestyle where I wanted to explain and explore all the different dark subcultures that exist in the world, sure. how they're the same, how they're different, the histories, where they come from. And I interviewed people in those different worlds because I didn't want it to just come from my own bias. I wanted the people to speak for themselves. Okay. And that's what paved the way for all my future books from then. Wow. You know, um, Allure of the Vampire, Our Sexual Attraction to the Undead. What is that? Talk to me about that. That's a very... That is probably my bestseller right now is because there's so much hype with True Blood and, uh, yes. you know, the Vampire Diaries and Twilight and all those other films and things. But it's been uh, cyclical. It comes and goes uh, every so many years. It's yeah. been that way since Bram Stoker's Dracula. Dracula and uh, then Interview with the Vampire yes, came out at the same it time. It keeps going yeah. and going. Every so many years it comes back. Why did you choose the pen name Corvus Nocturnum? That actually sort of was on a whim back in the old days when AOL dial-up was around <laughs> and, you know, chat rooms, if you remember back that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I wanted to relate to the people I was talking to, mm -hmm. you know. I wanted to fit in with them. I wanted them to identify with me and be willing to open up. So that is the name that I used on AOL chat. The family that you do have, were they accepting of your faith, religion, like, um, lack thereof faith? I, is it I faith? Think, Would you call it faith? It's more philosophy than faith. Okay. Uh, faith requires belief in something that you can't see. And philosophy is just the theory behind how something should be done. That's a little bit clearer way for me to express it. Okay. Um, my family's acceptance of it, I think they're kind of perplexed. They, I grew up Protestant. Okay. And I guess in a way my grandmother was an influence because she was like, I don't need someone at the pulpit to tell me how to read the book. I can read for myself. Mm -hmm. And that kind of made me laugh as a child, but it kind of stuck with me too. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. Satanism says we're the third side perspective. We're neither to the right or to the left. You know, we're right down the middle. It's common sense. Mm -hmm. It's all about creating and discovering and trying to become the ultimate you you can be. And sometimes that means going and looking deep. So that doesn't mean that you're immoral. It doesn't oh, no. mean no. Satanism doesn't mean that you go out <laughs> and you're killing people no. and you're um, drinking people's blood and you're doing crazy stuff and because that is the misconception that Satanists are immoral, that, you know, someone's going to get hurt. Or we have Hollywood to thank for that, unfortunately. Um, Satanism, when you compare it to any other world religion, and it is protected by the Constitution as a valid religion, uh, we have the uh, satanic sins, the satanic statements, and the rules of the earth. If you put all those together, we have triple the amount of rules that uh, the Koran and Christianity, you know, say you should do this. Right. Well, our rules aren't so much sins of thou shalt not. It's you're kind of stupid if you do these things. I got you. You know. Um, so I'd have to say that the highest mm -hmm. satanic sin in the satanic Bible is one of stupidity. Mm. You know. I read that. You're, you're supposed to be better than that. You're supposed to think before you act, think before you speak. Yeah. You know, and should, everybody should go by that. Yes. L let me let me have some quick comparisons, quick comparisons between uh, Satanism and Christianity. What's the major one? I think one I read was that the one I read was that Christians we don't take responsibility for a lot of our faults. We, the devil made me do it. Right. We say we're responsible for ourselves 100%. If there is no devil that made us do it, then we did it. Yeah. You and I did it. Yeah. And is that how you look at us? That's how people are. That's how I see all things. Yeah. You know, it's not Christianity as a whole. It's all people. Uh, I'm not one to raise the flag and say I'm anti all religion. I'm saying there's flaws in every way of thinking. What does it mean when you say Satanists are elitists? We're very opinionated. We're, okay. we're very harsh when it comes to our own faults. So therefore, it kind of carries on that we see the rest of the world as flawed because you have to be aware of reality. Hmm. Um, 
we see the hypocrisy in the world in politicians and religion uh, a lot of our members are musicians and writers and you know it's expressive well, we put that into our works it's truly called the alien elite and the reason for that is not only are we elitist because we want the finer things for ourselves and expect the best out of ourselves and hopefully the people around us but we're alien too because we understand full out that everybody around us doesn't prescribe to that they're not going to try to measure up that's why we have uh, people that don't take accountability for their actions wow. that's why we have prisons chocked full of people that you know you won't find hardly any Satanists in prison wow. and there's a reason for that uh, it's interesting you mention that because one of the rules of the earth of Satanists uh, in the Satanic Bible is when in the open harm, harm no, no one. one I read that and if they do, ask them to stop. If they don't, destroy them. When I read that, I yes. said, what does that mean, destroy <laughs> them? What does that mean? We are a religion of the anti-stupid. So we don't want people to go, oh, you're going to destroy them, you're going to kill them. No. Destroy can have many meanings. It means someone harasses you, you tell them to stop. They don't. You find out things about them. You turn things against them you can you know let other people know how they behave ruining someone's reputation because they were a jerk to you on the street uh, you couldn't cost them a career is there forgiveness in in Satanism if somebody does wrong you you ask them to stop they've they've harmed you now in Christianity we believe you know forgive turn the other cheek we are not a religion of turn the other cheek okay we do realize that people make mistakes Okay. If someone apologizes, it's counterproductive for us not to accept it. Hmm. But it's up to us as individuals, um, understanding how grievous the harm and the wrong was, if we're willing to accept it or not. It depends on what, uh, what retribution uh, is going to happen versus what type of uh, compensation from the other person are, are they just paying you lip service and saying oh I'm sorry because they don't want to go to jail because they know you have them dead to rights and could take them to court over something I mean that's destroying someone too hmm. uh, suing someone yeah. you know it doesn't mean kill them when you destroy them uh, so it's taken out of context yeah. Anton LaVey was well known for having a very harsh uh, personality but he was also a very happy loving person too he had kids yes he, he had, had animals and all kinds of things yes yeah. I mean, you don't want people to get confused between Satanism and devil worship. Right, right. I, I give lectures at universities on that subject. Um, what do you consider devil worship to be as far as... I read something about... Was it a part of old Satan, the Satanists' uh, rituals where there were candles made out of baby fat? Yes, you're talking about the Black Mass and during the 1700s. That, that was people who were what we call inverse Christians. They, they believe that there is a God and the devil, but they pray to the one. And they're doing everything blasphemous and backwards that they possibly can for what we now call shock effect, mm -hmm. you know, for attention or whatever. But uh, they actually believed it. Those were the scary people to me. So that never came into the newer... The, the newer part of Satanism, it was never a part no, of that. We, we have our rituals, we have our ceremonies and things like that, like any religion. Yeah, but we don't have candles made out of baby fat uh, in no, your rituals. It, and neither do we. We go to stores or, or you know, have people in our order that make them. Yeah. You know. right, let's talk about your major holiday. Major holiday. A major holiday. The I biggest read. one. The biggest one is one's birthday. Yes. And you feel that Satanists feel, feels that that is a major holiday because of what? Because without our own existence, there would be no world to enjoy. Hmm. Uh, so fill that day with all kinds of yes, pomp and it, circumstance. And it, just have the a dog and pony show, if that's what you want to do, if that's what makes you happy, you're the person yeah. to, that's supposed to be celebrating. So it's not Halloween as we would all think. Uh, it's one of the big ones. Okay. And the, the reason for that is because we like the trappings, the spookiness, the Adams family, <laughs> you know, sort of thing. It's tongue in cheek. We get to be ourselves for a day along with everybody else who wants to be like us too, but they just stop doing it. Wow. I'm looking at you now. You're not spooky. 
Well, a lot of people would think so. You're not. Uh, I, I have the signal of Baphomet and the double cane that I designed. But now, the double cane, if we can get a shot of that. <laughs> now, when you walked in with that, mister, I said, whoa, that is very intimidating. Do you go everywhere with that? No, just for, for functions and, you know, I'm getting a little older, so if I need it, you know, you I have it. You don't need it. You don't <laughs> need that. You're just as spry as you can be. Oh, thank what, you. What is, the, what is the pin for exactly? Uh, this is actually the official emblem of the Church of Satan. It is the sigil of Baphomet. What is Baphomet? Baphomet is a figure that evolved from the Knights Templar period, mm -hmm. uh, way back in the Crusades. Um, it was about uh, when things uh, changed throughout time and then you got to the Freemasons, uh, the Golden Dawn, other magicians and occultists, uh, the star itself being inverted, unlike mm -hmm. the uh, pagans who have the star up upwards. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Paganism is a little more like Christianity where it's us bringing things to the world for the betterment of all. Mm -hmm. The Satanists have, happen to be the opposite side of that. We prescribe to the star pointing downward. In other words, the benefits of the universe coming to, to us, us first. And there's a pragmatic reason for that. Mm -hmm. You, you want to be healthy, happy, and wise so that you can be a good role model for your children, for the rest of your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, Because the better you live, it, hopefully, the ripple effect will continue. Mm -hmm. Why put yourself out first? And then, you know, that, that's our attitude. I got it. So the star pointing down means the world coming to us. Let's put yourself first. It doesn't mean be cruel to other people around you and, you know, have total disregard. But that's it says another stereotype. For, but it says look out for number one. Yes. And yeah. that, that comes from Nietzsche and Ayn Rand and other philosophers long before Satanists. Be, you don't have a problem with other religions. You don't have a problem with... Christianity. You don't no. have a problem with I didn't Hinduism. I grew up hating it. Uh, I, I'm not like some of the other people that say, well, you're a Satanist because you hate all religion. No, this one just made sense to me. Yeah. Those others make sense to other people. But you don't hate? No. Why should I? Anybody. Why, why should I be hateful? That makes me unhappy. And Satanism is about being happy and living your life to the fullest. Yeah. That would be counterproductive. I agree. Let's talk about uh, lesser magic. <laughs> lesser magic involves sex sentiment and wonder mm -hmm. you got to deal with that for me okay. what, what does that mean uh, to break simply it down, to break Eric, it you're a very it smart guy you'll go right over my head <laughs> well, here. thank you um, <laughs> taking it from sexuality people are attracted to those who fit a certain look you can use that to your advantage like if you know that you're not the best looking person in the world but you're a man and you can bulk up and you shave your head to some people that's sexy mm -hmm. that's using magic truthfully it's psychology but magic is psychology to us uh, ritual prayer it's psychological decompression uh, it's all in the mind we just take away the third party and feel that it's all on us. So in magic, we're, we're decompressing our emotions in the ritual chamber by just releasing in a healthy way. So if you want to use sex magic, you will conjure up the image of the beautiful person you wish to be with. You'll, you'll concentrate on it. It may not be what you ultimately get, but that if you know what your goal is, you'll eventually get something closer to it. So therefore, you're happier. Have you ever wanted a woman, a beautiful woman or a beautiful someone and uh, you went, you did a ritual trying to maybe lure that person or will that person to you? Have you ever done? Yes. Yeah? Yes. And it worked. Did it work? Yes. The, the type of person that I desired did come into my life for a very long time. Wow. So I don't know if you just want to call that I created in my mind an image of what I wanted and I went after it when I saw that opportunity. I didn't allow fear to stop me, you know. Gotcha. When it comes to shock and awe, you know, the, the third part, we are the only religion in the world that will freely admit that religion is all about showmanship. The rituals, the robes. You you go to uh, Catholic mass; they're all decked out. They have thunderous, you know, music in most religions to to heighten the emotion, to to bring these things out in people. We did the same thing, but once we walk out of it, we realize we're the ones that did it. That's where the separation 
wise. It's more of a mental thing. There's no spirit that made it happen? Uh, no, it, it, it's not a spirit. It is what Nietzsche would call the will to power. Mm. That's within you? Yes. Not, no, there's no deity bringing no. the spirit. That you have the will inside of yourself. Right. And from what I read, you said that the, Satan represents the will that everyone has inside of them that they can tap into. Yes. Right? Yes. That's what Satan represents. He's a symbol of oh, being able to... Oh, this is a symbol. Yes. yes. It, it's something into. that we can identify with, to, that we resonate with, that we can say, I have the strength to overcome my problems. You know, you'll find that in self-help books. You'll, you'll go to a psychologist when, you know, saying, I can't deal with this. They say, yes, you can. We just give it a kind of cool, you know, surface coating to it. Gotcha. So, I want to get that right. So the wonder part of it is the what? The wonder part of it is the, you, say, you call it a shock and awe? Yeah, it, that's the way I would describe it to people on a simple level. It's the trappings, it's the heightened emotions, it's the music and the candles and the incense and some people wear robes and masks when they do it because they want to totally take themselves out of the audience perspective of, oh, well, that's George. No, it's not. It's some guy. Uh, it's like play acting as a child. Mm -hmm. You get to pretend to be something and let your emotions out because you're not worried about what somebody thinks of you. Nine satanic statements. Mm -hmm. Satan represents undefiled wisdom instead of hypocritical self-deceit. Yes. That's one of the things I stressed earlier. Yeah. Is... Uh, you have to look within yourself. Yeah. Don't be hypocritical. Don't say, well, that's not me. If you have a negative trait, fix it. You know, Satan's about pride. Well, if you keep getting pointed out to you that something you're doing is wrong all the time, chances are there's some truth in that. Hmm. Satan represents kindness to those who deserve it instead of wasting on ingrates, instead of wasting your kindness on ingrates. Yes. Uh, Self-explanatory. Yeah, I, I think so. Okay. Satan represents vengeance instead of turning the other cheek. Mm -hmm. uh, why let an enemy lash out at you again when you have a chance to prevent it? Kind of uh, prevenge when it comes to war and politics. Uh, Machiavelli was a, a great influence on Anton LaVey when it came to that thinking. Satan represents vital existence instead of spiritual pipe dreams. Instead of thinking that the afterlife will be better and we're meant to suffer here on earth, why not enjoy yourself here in case there isn't anything else? Isn't it a waste of your life? Satan represents responsibility to the responsible instead of concern for psychic vampires. Not to be confused with the other psychic vampires in the living vampire lifestyle. Mm -hmm. This came before that. <coughs> LeVay was saying people that will play on your emotions, they will say, oh, woe is me help me and they will continue to lean on you mm. because you feel obligated because they're family they're friends they're you know someone that you feel indebted to and they will keep doing it to the point where you're exhausted you're mentally drained you're financially drained you have to put a stop to it otherwise they will ruin you if you let them Satan represents man as just another animal because sometimes better sometimes better more often worse than those who walk on all fours. I think that one's fairly self-explanatory. Like I said earlier, we love our animals because they aren't going to bite us unless we treat them badly. You did say Human that. beings, you never know when someone's going to turn on you because they want your job or, you know, they want your boyfriend or, you know, whatever. Animals will treat you better. So we respect animals more than our fellow man unless they give us a reason to respect them. Hmm. You know, it's earned. It's not just given. Wow. Satan represents all of the so-called sins as they all lead to physical, mental, or emotional gratification. Yes. Um, the point was proven to a exaggerated sense in uh, one of my favorite movies, uh, Kitney Reeves and uh, uh, I believe it was uh, Al Pacino in The Devil's Advocate mm. when you know he showered him with all the money and wealth of being a young upcoming lawyer and the women and everything else and he's like the world is mine it's never been more apparent than in the 21st century and even though there was some mythological aspects you know the, the legends of Satan and everything thrown in at the end for theatrics because it was Hollywood he did have a good point that was very satanic in its thought that uh, 
man needs food, eat better food than junk, because that's hard on your body, and you might as well enjoy what you're putting into your mouth. Uh, a sex partner. Uh, you're, you're not going to gravitate towards someone lesser than you. You hope to at least get your equal, if not being lucky enough to get someone that you can strive to be better with. Um, you know, you, you take uh, gluttony too far, of course, one of the sins for Christianity, uh, you know, and then you go into lack of responsibility and you become fat and, you know, lazy and it has its own consequences. Our sins have consequences of, hey, don't do that. It's bad for you. Mm. You know, that's how we measure. Our morals come from what we feel is right. Not so much by a religion, by, let's put it this way, uh, it's been said I'm a very nice, warm, approachable person. Well, I'm that way in general. It's how I grew up. But at the same time, if you look at it from a selfish perspective, why would I want to be not that way to other people when I'm a writer. I want people to like me. I want them to buy my work to, you know, help me, you know, pay for my food and everything, just like they do at their job. So when I when I talk to people and I really get to know them, I want them to like me for me. So of course I'm going to be nice to them until they give me a reason not to. Mm. I got you. Satan has been the best friend of the best friend the church has ever had, and has kept the church in business all these years. That's a little bit of uh, Anton LaVey being a little tongue-in-cheek. Yes. <laughs> you have to understand that he did have a great sense of humor. That's he was it. trying to prove a point, though, that without an adversary, without a bad guy, it's hard to be the white knight. You know, you, you don't have someone to poke at and say, that's bad, that's wrong, come to us, because we're good. How do you measure good if there's never anything bad to, to weigh it against? Gotcha. We need our villains so that the heroes look good. I got you. What is one thing that you want to say to all of the people that are watching right now? Just one thing. If you had one thing to say, what would you want to leave people with as far as Satanists are concerned? Satanists are people just like you. We strive to become the best that we can be for our, ourselves, but also for our children. The trophy, if you will, the genetic makeup that follows after us. And for some people that choose not to have children, uh, it could be works of art, music. They leave a legacy because they want to be remembered for who and how they were. Mm -hmm. Don't we all? Yeah, we all do. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you. Well, thank you for having me.